Welcome to Proof Proverbs for Life Today. My name is Bert Allen, and this is a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. I really appreciate it when we get a chance to read a proverb together today, one verse in chapter one. You see, Solomon is talking to his son and warning him about things that are coming his way. And this all started back up here in verse all the way back up here in verse 10. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. This whole idea of sinners coming into your life to entice you to do evil things. God says, don't go with them. Do not consent. Don't agree. Because they want to steal from people. They want to ambush people. They want to kill people without cause. They want to swallow them like the pit. They want to swallow them like Sheol and drive them down to the pit. But when they say, come with us and go kill people and it'll all work out, you'll get wealthy. We'll have just one purse. You go, mm, not so much. And verse 14, which we're going to look at closely today, it says, throw in your lot with us. So here's the game plan from the bad guys. The bad guys look at you today and say, we'll make you wealthy. It'll be easy. We're going to take the spoil. We're going to just kill them quickly from ambush, take their money, and we'll get rich. It's a typical get rich scheme, and we know how those work out. But why would people be attracted to that? Well, often people are frustrated, unhappy, spiritually lost, those are the kind of folks that go, well, maybe that's okay. It's the same kind of thing going on today with drug use and drug sales and all kind of corrupt activity. They think, you know, I'm just going to get into this and make some money and get out. Or I want to make a lot of money. And it's the only way I can see how I can make money and a lot of it. And God says, when you throw your lot in with those people who entice you to sin, you're going to sin with them and experience the same consequences they will. And you may get wealthy for a while, but it's not lasting wealth, and you're certainly not taking it with you when you die. But I want you to see the other half of this. So over here, here is the same part, but the second half. You throw in with us and give us your time, talent, and abilities, and we'll go kill people and rob them, take their money. But... Once we get all the money, we'll share it evenly. We'll just have one purse. Well, you know, if those people are willing to kill other guys to get the money, they're going to be willing to kill you too without cause. So you got to think through who you're going to do business with. You always have to be very careful about who you're going to throw your lot in with. The Bible says that believers should never throw in their lot, to put that language, with unbelievers. What do we have in common with unbelievers? Why should we want to be joined with them in business where we'd be in close business relationship, where they would make decisions with us? They want you to throw in your lot with them, then we'll have one purse. And if you throw in your lot, we'll take care of you for the rest of your life. We'll just take all the money and use it to support all of us. Again, they didn't tell you the truth. They're the kind of people who kill other people. You know, if you believe either half of that, that you'll be okay if you throw in your lot with them, that you'll be okay if you have one purse with them, you know, you're just asking for trouble. They're enticing you to sin. Do not consent. Don't start down that road. Make sure that you're reading these Proverbs with your physical children. Make sure you're reading these Proverbs with your spiritual children, your spiritual friends and family. You know, you can just read one verse a day like we do, but you need to get the Word of God out to people so they hear it. They need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ from you about how you were born again and how they can be born again. If you don't know what I'm talking about with that, stick around to the end of the video. I'll be standing in front of a bricks background and you can learn from the Bible how you can have eternal life and be born again today with all of your sins forgiven 
and you become a brand new creation in Christ by faith in Jesus. But for now, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and the beauty of your word. May we love you more, Lord. May we walk in your ways and be delighted as we do so. We pray your blessing, Lord, that we would not be throwing in our lot with sinners who entice us, that we would not have one purse with them. May you always be in charge of all of our money. May we use it to glorify you. May we earn it in a way that glorifies you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you teach us. May we learn these lessons well and then practice them every day and share them with others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good or tried to do more good than bad or I tried hard or I've done a lot of nice things and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works, that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 you see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry, and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin, and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 3, 26, 23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5.8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you the free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. 
receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty, eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith, and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess, too, that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But, Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God, and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me, and your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. <laughs>